to Polymer Clay TV. I'm Elisa, and I have a super cool project for you today. I was just experimenting at like 4 o'clock in the morning and discovered this, and it is so cool, and it is so easy. Um, I am going to be using foils today, and I know when I posted about this, several people said, okay, they've had a lot of trouble using foils, and I agree with you. There are some foils on the market that are a little difficult to use and also, you know, they don't want to come off as, you know, in certain colors and things like that. But we have a few that we've researched the heck out of and played with a lot and these foils work really well. They stick to the clay really well and they come in six different colors. There's a rainbowy kind of, you know, graduated colors. There's gold, silver, red, pink. And then a really cool variegated color. Um, so we have six different colors. You'll be able to see them in the shop at createalong.com. So you're going to need some foils. But, you know, any foil that, that works for you is fine. Um, you're going to need some stencils. I'm using our stencils that are the jewelry size stencils. And there's a difference between jewelry size stencils like we have where the items, you know, have small just little small pieces whereas you have a stencil from some other company that doesn't make the jewelry sized ones the area is much bigger and when you're trying to fill an area that's big with with foil that can be a little tricky because you're going to probably get little spots that don't actually transfer and that's it's just the nature of the foil you know i mean you can get a really good coverage but there are times where like a little smidgy won't won't transfer or whatever and if it's a big design it's going to be noticeable but on something like this you really probably wouldn't even notice it you know so let me just take you through these and show you this is one i did here and i used this particular foil and i used the heart mylar stencil and there's so much you can do with this. Once you make the design, there's so much you can do. So really the sky is the limit. And I'm going to show you how to make the design. And uh, But I just wanted to show you some of the possibilities. This is uh, the stencil. This stencil isn't actually out yet, but that's coming soon. Hint, hint. And this is uh, the pink. So really, really pretty. And then I've got over here some bricks. Now, one of the things this technique will offer you is two options which is super, super cool because when you transfer this, and you'll see in a minute how I do it, you have a negative space left over. And so you can do something like this. So you can have the outline of the brick or the brick fully covered, or you could have the outline of the Moroccan lantern or the Moroccan lantern fully covered. So lot it gives you even more options. Uh, you know, so this here, let me show you this one, this one here, is the, you know, the opposite of this. So you get two different designs every time you do this technique, which is super cool because, you know, if you incorporated these two together, they're completely different looking, yet they'll go perfectly. So, you know, it's just something to think about, you know, if you're doing a, a bracelet and earring set or, 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 I mean, a necklace and earring set or something like that, or even a bracelet, you can alternate. So the sky's the limit, what I'm saying, is there's so much you can do once you learn this technique. So, and I, these are some of the things I've made here. This is pieced on top. And this is actually our new, we have a new set of cutters out. Woo woo. Um, this is actually this set here. And by the time that this airs, these will be in the shop. Actually, they're in the shop now, so they'll be in. Now, Kira decided that she wanted to make a bird that goes one direction and a bird that goes the other direction. So the set that has the feather the bird is going the opposite direction. So if you just want to make earrings where one bird goes one way and the other bird goes the other way, that's a perfect option. So just wanted to let you know about that. And these are some of the other cutters that I've used. And on this one, I, I think these I'm going to turn these into earrings. So I did both sides. And so this side on here has the little lotus design. And on this side is the Moroccan lantern. So that's another possibility as well. And so you can just play around to your heart's content and, and make all kinds of cool things. But let's show you the technique now. 
So one of the tricks for using foil is you do not want hard crumbly clay. You do not want cold clay. What you want is a stickier clay. So something that's very well conditioned is what you're looking for. And the reason I say that is because the foils have to stick to the clay. And if the clay is hard and crumbly, it's not going to stick. It's not going to soak into to the clay. And that's what you want to get the best result with foiling. So make sure, and this is imperative, that you condition your clay really, really well. So with that said, <laughs> let's start off with the Moroccan lantern one. And so I'm just going to lay this on a conditioned, a very well conditioned piece of black clay. And let me say something about the black clay too. You can use any color of clay to do this that you want, but you will get a completely different look when you put it on black clay. These were done on scrap clay and actually all of this was done on scrap clay. I was just trying to get rid of some scrap I thought, well, okay, let, let, let me use it that way and make it really pretty. However, it looks completely different if you look at this one versus this one. It pops a lot more. The colors pop on black. So if you're wanting that look of a really bright, bold, metallic look, then you want to put it on black clay. Just a big tip there for you because just like with the powdered pigments, if you've ever used powdered pigments, they look better, the interference colors and all, they look better on black. It just, it's just the way it is. So the same goes for this. I'm just giving you that tip because I think you'll find it helpful. So you really don't need a lot of tools. You need your acrylic rod for this. And so what I do is I start, like I always do, a stencil and I make sure there's a nice adhesion between the stencil and the clay so that it's not moving around and things can't get underneath it. So that's important too. So let's go, let's just go ahead and use this same graduated color one. And so you always want to have a little bit hanging over the side so that you can grab it and rip it. So that's one thing to know. The other thing is when you're seeing the color, you, you want the color to be on top because the other side, which on this one is like a rose gold color, is what's going to transfer onto the clay. So you're so your design color that you want, for instance, if this was this, if we were using the pink, you would want the pink to be face up because on the side you can see that's the other part that that's the part that will transfer onto the clay. And so, you know, as I'm showing you this too, you can mix it up with different colors, you know, and, and really have fun with it. If you wanted to piece little colors in there, you could do that. Um, here's the gold one. I could, if I wanted to come back with some gold, as a matter of fact, you know what? Let's do that just so you can see the difference. And let me just cut this off. I, you can use a scissor that is sharp. You don't want a dull scissor because it kind of drags it like this one. You see how this is? So find a scissor that's sharp. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a little hard to cut through. But, you, you know, I mean, you can make it go through. So I'm going to lay these. Um, let's start with one. And let's get this really nicely adhered. Okay, so we're going to start in a circular motion because we're trying to make sure that this foil sticks really well to the clay. And I found this circular motion is, is, is what does it really well. You can come back over it and rub, rub this way. You can rub that way. But when you're starting the circular motion, I have found really helps get it stuck to the clay. And so really that's all you're going to do is go back and forth. You want to create friction. You want it, you want it to get a little warm. Um, so you just do that until you feel like you ha have it done. And let me show you this a little closer. You can kind of see, you know, you can, you should be able to see that the lantern design is coming through and you can see it in the foil. So when you see that, you have a pretty good indication that your foil has transferred. So I'm going to leave that alone and move on to the next color. And I'm going to butt it right up here. And again, I'm going to kind of make sure this down and I'm going to roll in a circuit, go in a circular motion. And you can go over both of them. You can rub it this way, rub it that way, any way you want to rub it. But you want to get it so that it's, that it's getting friction and it's starting to warm up. 
And when you feel like you have it ready to go, you know, make sure to do your ends. When you feel like you've got that transfer done and you can see all these designs through it and it looks like it's, it's taken place. And it may take a minute or two, especially if it's not warm outside, but it's warm here. And I'm thinking that I am good to go. So you remember how when you're a kid and you have a band-aid and you and you know it's going to hurt because it's going to rip off the hair <laughs> you want to pull it like it's a band-aid and do it really fast so that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to go Phew! and then i'm going to do the same with this one and sound effects too so let me show you what i was talking about here before you see how now this this got a little a little of this didn't it got on the stencil so you probably wouldn't want to use this section However, this is a beautiful section right here that can be used that will give you that outline. And here you can see it on the gold too. So you can get, like I was saying, you can get two designs in one. You can get this here when I remove the stencil is going to be covering all of the lantern. Whereas if I use this part here, you'd see only the outline of the lantern. So let me go ahead and do the big reveal. And so you want to pull back slowly in case any of the foil didn't stick properly or whatever. You could always put it down, but it should stick. You're giving enough pressure to, to make it stick. And there you have it. That's all there is to it. And look at how unbelievably gorgeous that looks. And just think about all the possibilities, you know. That I, I can see now that my stencil was dirty because it ended up in the little, in the little uh, you know, crevices. So make sure your whatever you're using isn't dirty, just so you know. But um, I really love it. I just love how easy it is to do and how pretty it looks and all the possibilities. So just while I have you here, let's let's go ahead and and see what this gold one looks like, so you can see what I'm talking about. And even though some of this is messed up, let me kind of come in from this side here. We can still get some of it out of there, you know. Right, let's see. And so that way, you know, you're using all of the foil and getting two different looks. So let's do that same circular motion with sound effects. <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes. I'm so so strange. I do my sound even when I'm sitting alone. Sometimes I'll do sound effects. All right. So like I said, it's warm out. It's probably going to transfer pretty darn easy. And we're, once again, we're going to do that band aid thing. And there you have it. And you see now that you can get two completely different looks with the two options and now here most of the most of the foil is gone as you can see there was a few places that didn't transfer and like didn't transfer perfectly although you know i like that look it gives it kind of a you know a faded kind of rustic look so you can utilize that look too you know and let me kind of give you i know sometimes if the light doesn't hit it right it's a little hard to see on camera because it's metallic but you see how cool that is? I can, I can imagine so many neat things made with that. So, you know, I really recommend exploring foils. They're really fun. And as you can see, there is nothing to be afraid of. It wasn't hard at all. And you know what? If a little section messes up, don't worry about it. Ball it up and, do, and, and, and roll it out again and do, do something over it. I do that all the time. So, you know, just have fun with it. And uh, let's, cut, let's just cut something out real fast so you can kind of see that. And then, you know, I'll leave you to explore. And so here I have, these are the cookie cutters I was telling you about. And, oh, I don't like working on parchment paper for this because I like, I like for my cookie cutters. Let's take it off. Well, there we go. When I work on glass, I find it's the best. When I work on parchment paper, it I can't get as good a cut because it doesn't, you know, although I cut great, but I prefer to work just on the glass and kind of rub it on the glass. Um, it just works for me, gives it a nice, really nice clean edge and I don't really even have to go back and clean the edges. Although this is pretty good here. So that's what that looks like. 
And let me show you this one. We'll do that one with this particular just outline design. Give it a nice little push. Ah, oh, once again, I forgot to take it off of the parchment paper. Sorry, guys, but <laughs> it had cut, I think. This one's a little more detailed, so I'm going to see if I can kind of wiggle it on the... Here we go. Now I ripped this off. Now the one good thing about these cutters is you can push, you know, your finger through it and uh, poke it out. So normally if I was working on my glass, this is what I would do. I would take it and I would rub it on the work surface like this. And then it cleans it all up and I don't even really have to clean it out, clean it when it gets out of the cutter. That's another little tip. <laughs> But I'm working on some silicone mat, which isn't really conducive to that. But here you have that. How beautiful. How beautiful. And you could stack them and make really... That's what I did with um, that other one I showed you. I stacked it. Here it is. They're two different designs stacked together. And So just play with it. Enjoy it. And I'd love to see what you guys make. Come on over to PolymerClayTribe.com, which is our Facebook group. And post pictures, share all the, the cool stuff you're making, and we'd love to have you join us. Also, Polymer Clay Universe, we just released the April issue, and you can join that for only $5 a month. And there's lots of resources in there as well, and that's at PolymerClayUniverse.com. We have several articles, and uh, there's I believe there's a tutorial this month, so lots of fun stuff going on in there. And Polymer Clay Adventure, you can still sign up for that if you want. PolymerClayAdventure.com So, I think that's about it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this project, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me.